and to watch them in a living state and then to subject them to various different frequencies and the harmonics and all the rest of it was the key to discovery that cannot be duplicated today. Right. So, um, in the meantime, Dr. Strecker and myself were culturing out viruses, and I'm going to tell you that's spooky, Jeff. You don't want to do that if you don't have to do it, because you just don't know what gets on your fingertips yeah. when you do this. And Bob Strecker used to always look at me and say, well... I'll just write you a prescription for antibiotics if you get sick. <laughs> and I'm going, well, I don't yeah. want to get sick. No. Right? That's, I can hear uh, Dr. Strecker's voice. That's yeah. almost deadpan humor. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was no big deal, but you got to remember that Dr. Streff, uh, Strecker was a Ph.D. in pharmacology. Uh huh. So he knew yeah. what this stuff was. Yeah. And so we always observed what Dr. Strecker told us to do, and none of us ever got sick, and we never got any strep, and we never got, you know, any E. coli or anything like that. And, of course, John Crane's uh, instruments never killed any of them either. And what he would do, Jeff, w which is kind of funny because Dr. Strecker and I used to look at each other, he used to say, you watch, this will be dead by morning. And he'd bring out these magnets, and he put it on top of the culture disc inside the incubator. And I, and, and we'd just look at each other and we'd say, okay, John. And we'd go away. We'd just go back to what we were doing. And sure enough, the next morning to come and the culture was in full bloom. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. it didn't, it didn't do anything. So, you know, there's, there's, there's something else. You know, in the equation here that Dr. Dr. Strecker and myself were thinking about was, you know, is this guy living Royal Rice life for him, you know, after the fact? Right. And uh, so we got into some pretty heavy discussion. Oh, I'll bet you did. With, uh, with John Crane and, and, you know, what Rife was doing. And, of course, Crane answered the question. Sounds but, like Crane... Crane rather than, than admit he didn't know, was constantly trying to construct something that would make it sound like he did. Exactly. Yeah, and we'll get into that. Pretty frustrating. All of you, I hope you're listening carefully. This really pertains to the most crucial medical scientific tool that uh, has ever been on the planet. Literally the way to destroy diseases in the body at distance without harming any surrounding tissue. And it's, it's just that simple. It's, that's what Dr. Wright did. And we'll be right back. To our conversation tonight with Mr. John Bedini about the work of the incomparable genius Royal Raymond Wright. We've heard a lot in the first hour, including the efforts of Dr. Robert Strecker, a true hero of our times as well, as John and Bob tried to get the Rife Universal Virus Microscope Number 3 to function. It uh, was a futile effort, unfortunately. Okay, John, uh, pick up the story and let's go forward. And all of you, please do click on the link under John's name at rents.com and go to John's uh, outstanding page on uh, Royal Rife's work. So anyway, um, uh, we uh, what we started to do, Jeff, was we started to look at these. Uh, let me just explain one thing. While this is all going on, John Crane is treating cancer.
cancer patient right. in the front office. Wow. <laughs> and of course, Bob Strecker is going, John, you can't do that. Not in my office, you can't. Yeah, well, it, this was in my office. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and, 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 and it was like John Crane's home away from home, all right? Okay. But... The, the, now, the when thing, you say he's treating them, folks, uh, what John Crane is doing is running his little... Is a little frequency generator yeah. on people, having them put their their feet on metal plates, I assume, and hold the uh, stainless steel hand cylinders yes, either you are. or. Yeah. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, you are absolutely correct when you say that. So, we're trying to do this research work in the back, and we're trying to get John Crane not to treat people <laughs> in the front office. That's, that's right. pretty funny. And we're trying to be yeah. as nice as possible because. Right. We're trying to discover exactly what it is, you know, that that Rife was doing. Sure. And uh, so we got him for a while to um, to stop treating, you know, hopeless victims, and they were hopeless, mm -hmm. the ones that were coming in there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, and, and this is a shame because every one of those people that paid John Crane five hundred dollars mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. Along with my aunt, so doesn't give the whole Rife legacy a, a real good ring. Does no, it? it doesn't give it a good ring when mm. you have somebody that probably really didn't know how the items operated, right? But so. who found a way to make a living mm -hmm. after his drafting mm -hmm. fell through. You follow me? I sure do. And um, and of course. John Crane was not the type person. I mean, he would go, he would go in the back, and you'd be working on an instrument. Uh, and I'm going to get into those instruments in a minute because I want people to understand exactly what we were working on and what we were trying to do. But um, he would actually take the instruments after Strecker and I put, would put one together, and then we would put the slides underneath the microscope, and then we would put this stuff the bacteria and stuff underneath the microscope, and of course we'd turn on the machine and we'd watch. I mean, Bob was very good at that. And uh, he would actually go in the back when you weren't looking, and he would take a machine off the shelf and he'd sell it. <laughs> he'd just play and sell it. And we'd say, John, you know, what did you need the money for? And it, well, I, th this bill came due. Or, or I forgot to tell you that I owed that I owed this person this much money. Of course, that's not what he did with the money. But well, what was he doing with the money? Well, whatever, whatever John Crane was doing with the money, Jeff. Okay, is a good question because uh, he he always had some kind of dealings with shifty people. So whether he was into debt to, with somebody, I think it was going to a loan shark. Was he playing the ponies? And, and uh... <laughs> I have no idea, but oh. but you know, I can I can find a lot of humor in this now. Yeah. Oh, because, back then it would have driven you up the wall. Well, it did drive me up the wall, but yeah. you know, I was told to just you know cool it, don't go off the deep end, you know, because you, your equipment's starting to go missing, right? And you need this equipment to do your work, right? Right, right, right. And so, uh, so we finally got John. We finally got him to stop, and he, and he, you know, promised us that he would never do this again, and he would concentrate on what we were doing. So, what we were doing was we were taking these square wave generators, and we were following some of Tom Bearden's work which had to do with pumped wave mixing, and I'll explain that a little bit. Uh, a pump wave mix is a low frequency, something around, say, 1 or 2 hertz. That's very low. Yes, and sometimes 